Welcome back to part two on the Motorola Restore. So let's get started. We we'll start changing these paper caps. Well, I'm going to make this ballast today. Here's my parts I have ready to make it with. This is one that I've used on a test chassis for several years. I thought the caps were kind of large on it, but the ones I was able to find for this one are even larger. So, I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I'm going to put it together here and we'll see what it looks like. Come up with some kind of a cover for it. Well, there's a completed ballast. So let me turn the power right on and let's see if it works. Yeah, we're drawing current. Good sign. Or in addition to receiving have sound, so every month. I think it's going to work. There's a looking in the mirror, there's a picture, so good deal. We got that going. So now I'm gonna do something else to it to put a little protective covering over it. I'll show you that when I get it finished. Well, here's what I come up with for a cover for the ballast. And this is two of the original covers that were on the ballast in these sets. I had a couple of them laying around. I just split them apart. Took two and made one. We'll just fit that over the ballast that I made. And it has vent holes like the original, so that'll let the heat out. And the top's going to be hollow, so that'll let even more of the heat out on those resistors. So I think that'll work. Turn the, the part number out and face the back of the chassis like that. Well, everything's taken care of. Uh, got all the paper caps changed and picture looks good. We have good sound. I did find an interesting thing. I had a vertical issue. Uh, picture stretched at the top and uh, checked everything in the vertical circuit. Resistors were all good. The caps were good, but here's what I found. These two high voltage caps, this one and this one, I had replaced them with these orange type, which these are 0.0047, 6kV. They work, but the vertical was out of proportion, so ended up using the better quality ASC 0047s and that repaired my proportion problem in the vertical circuit so I kind of learned something on this chassis. I've used these in the past and really never had any problems with them and one final look of underneath the chassis There's a filter cap set of mounted on the two terminal boards.
And earlier I did mention that the focus was not working correctly. Uh, the only problem that it had was the high voltage was low. And once I changed those caps, the high voltage caps, that took care of that. So focus is adjusting now. It's right in the center of the range where it should be. So chassis works finished and I'll get the cabinet out. Don't have a lot to do to it, just some repairs were that was broken during the shipment. Uh, a little cleaning, but other than that we'll get it ready for the chassis to go back in and wrap this job up. Well, have this glued up where this was split along this edge and clamp both ways, plenty of glue. Here are the decorative, I call them vent covers that are in the cabinet. I'm sure that's what they're for is to let air out and cool to keep the chassis cooler. And some of them don't look too bad, some of them are pretty rough, but we'll see what we can do with them to make them look a little better. There's the three knobs. Go on the front. I think they'll clean up really well. Here's the channel selector knob. It, it looks good. And here's the broken back. And I'll just glue it. That should take care of it good enough anyway. Uh, front glass that goes in front of the, t the picture tube. Got it cleaned up, it looks good. There's the original gasket that was on the tube. I think I can use it. It's still pretty flexible. So that'll work. Done some cleaning on the top. Probably try to steal wool of these decorative brass pieces or brass colored pieces. And this orange paint, we'll try to get it off. There's even some here on the edge of the handle. As you can see. Uh, there's the front. The grill cloth, I, I may just leave it. Doesn't really look that bad. And that CRT surround decorative piece, I may pull it off. See what I can do with it. Right now, I gotta let the glue dry on the repair on the cabinet and we'll wait about 24 hours before we do anything else to the cabinet. Well here's how I glued the back. Just put glue along the brake and then put a cable tie around it till it dries. And here's the decorative louvers that go on the vent holes and the knobs after some cleaning. Uh, the louvers still are discolored, a couple of them are, but it, I'm going to let it go with that. And the orange paint, eh, a little success, but not much. Or the more you put solvent on it to try to get the paint off, then it tends to break down the cover, so I guess we'll let that go. It did come off of the handle, I got it off of it, okay. And because that brace was broken, that glue block here, the old one, it was broken, so I've put a new glue block in against the against it, and that'll support the CRT bracket a little better. It was working okay like it was, but it's a little bit loose and didn't want that, so. See, I've got it clamped up there, and we'll let that set for a day or two. Make sure it sets up good, and that'll stiffen that up. And there's a picture tube mounted back in. I uh, haven't put the chassis in yet. See, it's still out of the set back there. Uh, but I had the picture tube straight. It's, it's fastened down, so 
All we like is putting the chassis and the knobs on in the back and we're finished. One thing I would have liked to have done on the 6 kV caps, those four high voltage caps, if I had the original motor rollers, I would have just restuffed them. I had two of the point oh oh fives, which were these two, which would have been fine, but I only had one of the point oh oh ones. So if I'd have restuffed, I'd only had three that had the Motorola logo on them and then the other one would, would not have so so that's why I didn't stuff the original caps would have been nice to have been able to use these but maybe then in another project we'll restuff them and another thing I did here on the back of the chassis it had the two knobs for the vertical and the horizontal holds but this brightness control was, did not have a knob on it, so I have some of those extra knobs on some part sets, so I went ahead and put one on that. Because you do adjust these three more so than the other controls over here. This set uses four chassis screws that hold it into the case. One there, there, there and there and this one is twisted off so I'm going to have to try to get that out of there the other three are okay uh, weren't any screws with this set if you look at my first part one of the restore you'll see how it arrived poorly boxed nothing fastened down uh, you know I don't blame the seller for the screws being missing in the bottom but he could have at least tried to fasten everything down before he shipped it but anyway try to get that broken screw out so we can round up four screws to put back in this chassis well that wasn't as easy as I thought it'd be but I got it out. I had to take the Dremel tool and cut down this in the center of it. So I think that'll work. We'll find some screws now. And fortunately I had four feet with screws off of a old parts TV. These are Motorola. So they go right like that. Alright, I got the chassis slid in, ready to put the screws in the bottom, speakers hooked up, ground wire from the speakers grounded over to the chassis, picture tubes plugged in, alright everything buttoned down, back in, looking good, picture's good. That completes the restoration of the 1950 Motorola 9L1 TV. Hope you got some tips and just enjoyed the video. So we'll see you next time. We'll start another TV restoration. Thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. And we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.